Hello everyone and welcome to episode 22 of SSTO Space Program and today is indeed a very exciting day in the history of this series because Duna colon ship is completed and we are sending it to Duna today. The ship is ready, is fully fueled and the only thing that we need to do is to crew it up but before that happens we have a couple of other things that we need to settle before we launch. So the things that we need to do before we actually send our colony ship to Duna is set a bunch of strategies that will allow us to benefit a little bit more from the science data that we've collected so far and we will collect in the future. And since the entire tech tree has been almost unlocked, the um, um, thing that we can do is actually we can set a strategy that will convert 100% of our science gains into funds. We can unlock the remaining science node that uh, will give us the RTG generators and then we can convert all the remaining science into funds directly. And with that, everything that we'll get in terms of science right now will be transformed into funds instantly. And since our Duna research station is still producing quite a lot of science, it still hasn't processed all the data, every time we send 500 science points from that station right now, we'll get around 50,000 credits. So um, the full package from that station will equal to about 250, 260,000 credits more or less, maybe a little bit more. So now we can fund our exploration missions in a fun and fast way because those labs are filling in with science data, processed science data, roughly around 41, 42 days. Another thing that happened is that our exploration vessel that we sent to EVE actually got back to Kerbin and that leveled our crew that was on board of that ship to level 4 and got us some nice science as well. Okay, but with all of that out of the way right now, we can send our first colonists up to our Duna colony ship and to Duna. And we are doing that using a, um, this kind of, I would say a shuttle, nuclear space plane, I don't know how to call that. Um, it will be a crew transport that we'll use to get them into orbit and then it will dock to our Duna ship and um, be used as a crew transport around Duna. So this plane is able to land on Duna, obviously, and get into orbit with ease. It has around uh, 2,500 meters per second in nuclear stage and uh, is also capable of VTOL landing on Duna uh, using a single aerospike engine. As you can see, it can carry 10 Kerbals maximum, but we are taking only 6 with us. 2 scientists, 2 engineers, 1 pilot, that would be Valentina, and 1 scout. Um, three Kerbals that we have currently on Duna, that is our three vets, are, um, are already there, frozen in the Artemis uh, chambers. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That, th those nine Kerbals will be our first colonists on the surface of Duna. Before we go back to our plane, we obviously needed to land our orbital class booster. That would, was an SSTO rocket as usual. And this time I did not use inflatable heat shields as high speed drogue shoots. As you can see, I just uh, satisfy the needs of those who don't like this solution. I actually like it very much, but nevertheless. So here we are back in orbit and ready to dock to our Duna colony ship. Um, yeah, all of that was recorded at lovely 6 FPS because with everything docked to the ship and uh, you know all the parts, all the containers and everything, that ship got over 800 parts if I remember correctly and wasn't very fast. So I also added this small robotic orbital utility vehicles to you know move the containers around and we actually needed to change a little bit the setup of how the containers were docked because I decided um, post, and, you know, in the post thinking about how this whole thing and, and the whole endeavor should be uh, should be done, I decided that I will add two more components to our base, making a total of eight different buildings that we'll build eventually on the surface of Duna. And um, didn't really think that through entirely. And uh, yeah, we need to free one uh, small docking ports. Those uh, docking ports that you can see on the sides are actually doubled. Um, so there is a large docking port and a small docking port in the center of it. So um, yeah, so we'll dock one of those smaller um, containers to one side and then the entire nuclear plane, with, which is our crew transport on the other. And uh, those robotic orbital utility vehicles are actually quite useful. Um, they uh, use those control modules that were introduced by, I think, Freight Transportation Technologies mod. Pretty useful solution. I actually like it pretty pretty much because it combines reaction wheel RCS system in every direction and quite a lot of monopropellant and electric charge so you know all of that could be replicated using stock means but uh, as I said with 800 parts that's uh, already quite a lot. 
So as you can see, our um, Duna colony ship with those seven Kerbals on board uh, can provide for their needs for about a couple of years, which is uh, way more than we actually need to send them to Duna. And here it is, ready in its full glory and orbit around Kerbin. And um, I must say, I am actually surprised that uh, this whole endeavor actually came to be. That that's the by far the largest project I've ever ever done in the you know in KSP in my entire history of my playthrough. It took six episodes to actually build this whole thing and a lot of you know work that was done you know behind the scenes and um, yeah I just decided that we have to we have to do it because otherwise we'll never finish construction. So what has been added when you were not looking? Those are those um, DIY containers introduced by the Crown Construction mod, and um, inside those containers are the blueprints and uh, you know the most important things that you would need to build um, anything actually of world. And uh, to complete construction, we will need material kits that are stored in those two large containers um, at the aft of the ship, and we also need a Crown Construction workshop that um, we have, and uh, you will see in the in a, in a moment which vehicle is it. So to build anything on the surface of Duna, we'll need those two types of containers and uh, this vehicle right here, which is our mobile construction workshop. It provides for um, a couple of Kerbals, actually two engineers at most, for um, a bunch uh, of days, for a bit over two months, I think. And it has everything it needs to actually start a construction of a, you know, a single type of building. Another vehicle that we'll need is this mining slash refueling rover that is also a crane and a cargo vehicle or lorry, I would say. Ev everything included, basically, it's a full package that we'll use to not only refuel shuttles, sky cranes and everything, but also move all the components, heavy components, on the surface of Duna. This vehicle right here is probably, as you have guessed, a sky crane and that will use to deliver the bulky type of cargo on the surface of Duna, mainly those DIY containers for larger buildings because those would not fit inside a cargo bay of this, you know, orbital shuttles that you will see in a second. This sky crane can uh, land on Duna on its own and get back into orbit and can deliver around 40 tons of cargo. Um, those vehicles are my favorite probably because I spent, I think, arguably the longest time to make them and those are orbital shuttles that will use to deliver mainly material kits on the surface of Duna but also other goods because the containers that are stored inside the cargo bay can be refitted for other goods as well and we have plenty of them so we will use them to deliver fertilizer and supplies as well. Lastly we have forward mining stations that were <laughs> inspired by Mass Effect Andromeda uh, in terms of looks and kind of in terms of functionality as well. Those are automated mining stations that will deploy on the surface of Dina in different locations very far away from our base where the concentration of different resources is the highest and right now we have four types of those mining stations. Uh, one is designed to mine hydrates, uh, the other one is designed to mine gypsum, we also have one that's designed for substrates and I think um, dirt. All of that will be needed to actually start farming and growing crops on the surface of Duna and provide supplies. So here we are, everything is ready so let's light up the engines and let's go off to Duna. This ship um, has quite a lot of Delta V but uh, is carrying also quite a lot of extra fuel for refilling the shuttles and sky cranes so with only the minimal amount of fuel that we, we are allowed to use, let's call it that way, it should have around 4000 to 4500 meters per second, but since it has, even with those tweak scale nuclear engines, has very small thrust to weight ratio, we needed to execute the, uh, uh, the ejection burn at three passes and then burn a little bit, uh, you know, in the le less than optimal spot. But hey, we did it. And here you can see the ship leaving the Kerbin Sphere of Influence in its all majestic glory. And I must say that, uh, I mean, I still cannot kind of comprehend how this whole thing was possible to do and uh, yeah as some of you pointed out it's not exactly the most realistic solution or maybe it is I don't know humanity have never colonized any other world and I would say that in you know from a perspective that you would like to establish a fully functional colony this is not an overkill it might look like an overkill provided what we are doing currently but um, there is no fancy stuff on this ship just the bare minimum that you would actually need so yeah but as we were going to Duna another interesting thing happened and uh, our another colony ship that we have sent quite a long time ago to Jewel system has actually arrived at Jewel sphere of influence when Duna colony ship was in transit 
and we needed to execute a small correction burn to actually get a gravity assist from Tylo and get a stable orbit around Joule and now they are also ready to start colonizing the Joule system. But that's a story for a different video. For now, let's go back to our Duna colony ship and as you might have expected, somewhere mid-course we needed to correct our course a little bit and lower our periapsis uh, a little bit more so we would be in a more advantageous position to actually establish a circular or semi-circular orbit around Duna once we get uh, this maneuver actually required a very small burn or around a couple dozens of meters so nothing special and after just a couple hundred days we reached Duna and as you can see yeah, we are finally here. I can hardly believe it, but uh, hey, what can I say? Once we arrived, we executed an insertion burn around Duna and um, yeah, that wasn't particularly difficult. We still had plenty of fuel left, actually much more than we needed, but all of that fuel will be used to refuel, you know, at least most of it will be used to refuel our sky trains and orbital shuttles and whatnot. So it will, won't go to waste. And as usual, we can always send the ship back to Kerbin to, you know, prepare it for a different colonization mission. Right now, it's sitting in orbit around Duna and we can actually start deploying modules to establish our first permanent colony on the surface of Duna. And I must say, <laughs> I am I am super excited. It will be a huge task and we won't finish it today or actually I've actually finished establishing this almost entire colony, but we won't do it in this video because it will be super long. First thing that we needed to do anyway was, um, or I decided that we should start maybe with this, was landing the um, forward stations. And thanks to our awesome scans at maps and, um, you know, orbital scans and everything that we've done, we already had information about all the resource distribution. And the first station that we needed to land was the one designed to mine gypsum. And those stations, well, they are pretty simple in operation. They have four terrier engines and are enough Delta V to actually land on their own easily. And uh, the logic behind this operation was to land those stations in areas that have the highest concentration or almost the highest concentration that we could find on the planet for a specific resource. They also have a, um, I think that's from Duna series, <laughs> coincidence, um, logistics module that would allow for automatic um, push operations into planetary logistics system. If you're not familiar with it, that's something that MKS colonization systems uh, introduce. Kind of like a different type of resource management that I believe is designed to get around the part limit in KSP. So basically what it does, it allows you to mine resources of, at one location and then transfer them into kind of arbitrary planetary warehouse at some small penalty. That then uh, if you have a specific part in your you know, other base, you can pull that without actually physically transporting those resources. And I believe this is whole thing was done actually to, to get around um, part limit in KSP because otherwise you would need to build a huge base and uh, yeah those uh, mining stations were obviously inspired by Mass Effect Andromeda and uh, <laughs> I think it turned out pretty well looking also and it's quite useful but uh, yeah well, I mean it will be quite useful I hope so after landing we obviously started the drills and uh, deployed everything you know radiators and whatnot and we were ready to land another station another station was designed to mine hydrates and hydrates are used obviously to get water and they can be uh, processed to get water to extract water out of Martian or Dunan, Dunan dirt and um, I wanted to use a scansat map that would give me the layout for the resources but for some reason those smaller maps uh, sometimes are really bugged or I'm doing something wrong but uh, I couldn't get it to work so after landing this one um, also, everything was activated and uh, the drills were deployed and started mining. And uh, once those smaller containers that you can see will fill up, they will be automatically, um, some parts of the resources will be transported into planetary logistics system. Another station that we needed to deploy was a station designed to mine dirt. And again, as usual, that uh, was done uh, in the same way we actually decided to choose the uh, area that was uh, had the higher concentration the highest concentration of dirt available <laughs> as you might have expected dirt was quite common on uh, duna 
<laughs> so that wasn't uh, particularly difficult and um, those stations have quite a lot of Delta V because I was uh, afraid that some some resources might be available you know um, in areas that are far away from our orbit so that would not be very close to our circular orbit or maybe close to the poles or somewhere else and I also wanted them to be a relatively um, let's call it um, robust solution that would also work well on other bodies not only on duna so if we ever if this actually proves to be useful we could use them on our different colonization missions the last station that i wanted to deploy was the one designed to mine substrate and um, substrate as you can see uh, was slightly uh, in a slightly inclined location let's call it that way slightly up north from our circular orbit and uh, yeah this one also uh, was in the uh, highlands or midlands and uh, somewhere up upper let's call it that way in higher regions of Duna and that also was landed so with all those four stations landed on the surface of Duna now we can actually start building everything and the first thing to do that that we needed to do was to land our mobile workshop. This workshop is also equipped with VTOL engines and can land on its own and we will use it to construct this beautiful starter dome in the next video. So for now I would like to thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed and stay tuned for the next video that will be coming sooner than you think. I would also like to thank Joe Luffin and Shrax and all my patrons on Patreon, your continuous support is amazing and very helpful. So if you enjoy my content and would like to become a patron, the links are in the description as well as links to Vidme and Twitch where you can also find me. For now I would like to thank you very much for watching, my name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.